Hey guys, it's Jag. Welcome back to the arcade. Today we're going to start a brand new series for the channel. Let's play just another game, The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening for the Nintendo Switch. And I am sitting here with the biggest smile on my face. This is my literal childhood. I had the original Link's Awakening for the Game Boy. I had Link's Awakening DX for the Game Boy Color. And of course, when I heard about the Switch remake, I had to have this one as well. Because, if Majora's Mask is my favorite Zelda game of all time, this is the Zelda game that I have the most childhood memories of. I wasn't particularly good at it, I was only about 10 when this came out, but I played this for hours and hours, doing nothing but stuff like the trendy game, or farming rupees for the bow and arrow. Literally farming them out in the field in front of the shop. For hours and just I loved this game even though I wasn't good at it and when I saw this at PAX and I got to see how faithful it was to the original I almost teared up I'm going to love this and I hope you guys love this just as much let's get started you never wake up. You are tossing and turning. What? Zelda? <laughs> no, my name's Marin. You must still be feeling a little woozy. You are on Koholand Island. <laughs> Follow the lane south to reach the beach where I found you. Since you washed ashore, lots of nasty monsters have been in the area. So be careful, okay? All right, what do you, what do you have to say, sir? Nah. Well, Link, you have finally snapped out of it. Name's Terran. Hope you're feeling better. What? How did I know your name? You think it's weird, eh? Well, I saw it on back of the shield. You got your shield back. Hold R to repel enemies with it. Oh yeah, some other stuff like this washed up on the beach. If and you go look, watch out for monsters. Ever since you showed up, Link, I've seen them all over the place. Now I hope you're paying attention to the names here. Marin and Terran will be directly referenced in the Ocarina of Time years from now by another father and daughter, Palin and Malin, which I always thought was a really cool reference. What's this? Is this a stand for something? It says Goomba. So that's been added. So is this. A stand for something. It says Piranha Plant. So clearly, obviously, there have been enhancements made. Some sort of collectibles that we can get. Mario themed. I'm hoping it's some sort of collectibles and not like something I'm supposed to have the amiibo for. Oof. 
This looks heavier than heavy. Your current strength won't cut it. Yes, this is a game where you could not lift pots immediately. Welcome to Mabe Village, and this is where I honestly spent a lot of my time as a child because I couldn't beat the first dungeon, so I got very, very familiar with this area, especially this nice lady right here. Yahoo! I'm fine, and you? She's always enthusiastic. And in here, this is someone who can be helpful if you get stuck. This game is not terribly complicated, but it did have a help system featuring this guy. Old Man O'Rira. Uh, um, hmm. How to say. Please call outside. It seems that Old Man O'Rira is a shy guy in person. Yes, he has a telephone. Bring, bring, bring. Click. Yes, it's the bucket mouse. Thanks for calling. Well, click. What the? You must have dialed the wrong number. Oh, yes. You would go to phone booths. We'll check his stand out another time. You would go to phone booths just like this one all over the island to call old man Olrira or Olrira for hints. Bring, bring. Hello, it's me, Olrira. Ask me anything about the island. If you get lost, give me a call. You know, there is a library in the village that might have some good information for you. Talk to you later. Click. Nice background music there. When this came out, this was the fourth Legend of Zelda game. You had Legend of Zelda, Legend of Zelda 2, Adventure of Link. Then you had... uh. A Link to the Past, obviously, and this one took place was supposed to take place after A Link to the Past. Now that's not where it really fell into the timeline. It ended up falling into the timeline after the Oracle games. What do we got at the shop? Shield, 20 rupees. Three hearts for 10 rupees. Deluxe shovel for 200 rupees. And a piece of heart for also 200 rupees. You are the source of many, many memes. Hey, welcome. See something you like? Just bring it here. Oh, we'll do that later. This right here, once I got a sword, I would farm this patch of grass and bushes all day for the money for a bone arrow because it costs 999 rupees. But I was a kid and I had plenty of free time on my hands. I'll tell you more about that later on. Uh, what's this? Here sleeps the flying rooster. Good for him. We have plenty of live roofs, roosters that we can't do anything about. We can't get in here. This is the dream shrine. We'll be able to get in there at a later time. Ah, a happy little family. <laughs> yep, those are my boys. I'm Papal. Pleased to meet you. I'll be lost in the hills later, so keep a lookout for me here. It's good to have your day planned out like that. Ah. With four boys who look alike, even I get confused sometimes. By the way, my baby wants a Yoshi doll. I saw one at the Trendy game, but I couldn't get it. Well, we're going to have to do that because that's part of the trading sequence, but if you noticed when we were down there, it was surrounded by bushes that we can't do anything about because you certainly can't lift them. I think you're new. No, you're not new. You're a cute boy, though. Yep, yep. In fact, over here, we have the best boy. Hey, Bow Wow. I love you too, buddy. <laughs> Madam Meow Meow. Ho ho ho! My Bow Wow was so proud of his fine fur coat. <laughs> yip yip! Yip yip! And who do we have here next door? She, she seems to be content raising a family of chomps. You are actually quite friendly in this game compared to, you know, Mario. 
Chow Chow. Makeup, jewels, dresses. I want it all. Hmm. And some new accessories would be nice. All right. We'll have to keep that in mind as well. Strange talking chomp. Hello, little kiddo. What do you have to say? Hey, man. When you want to save, hit up the system screen. You get there by opening the subscreen with plus, then pressing R to get to the system screen. Uh, don't ask me what that means. I'm just a kid. That is a running line for pretty much all of the children in the village. Back before we had memes, that was kind of a meme. Along with the shopkeeper. Up here we have the fishing hole. How about some fishing, little buddy? I'll only charge you 10 rupees. Well, we can't do that now, but we will want to do that later. You have to have more passion. Live a little. Well, I'm broke. That's the problem. I don't have 10 rupees to give to you. We can't go down in the well. Hey, I want to play. I hear that when you're running out of hearts, you better go find a big fairy. Why? I have no idea. I'm just a kid. <laughs> of course you are. Oh, talk to me. I heard that you can press minus to look at the island map. Not only that, you can stick pins in it with A and remember stuff with X. But I don't understand what they mean by that. Because you're just a kid. Ah, uh, the map. We can see the fishing hut. We can see a telephone booth. We can see the store, the town tool shop. To think that this used to be what? I think it was an 8x8 grid, so it was 64 screens wide. And now it's just one continuous map. Technology, man, it's great. Alright, to the right is Tail Cave, to the south is Taranbo Shores. Let's check out the library. Why not? This is mostly just like an extended manual, but there is one book. Actually, two books that we're going to be very interested in. So most of these are just like tips on how to play the game, selecting the item that's right for you. Read this book. The subscreen you can get to with plus is very useful. You can select your favorite items for the X and Y buttons there. Try many different things to find what's right for you. So we're not going to go through all of these, but you can see this is a bookshelf. What? You can see that? Okay. There's a book on top of this bookshelf that we can't get, and then there's a different book over here. And also, that plant looks interesting. Dark Secrets and Mysteries of Koholint. Do you really want to read it? Yes. <gasps> What's this? You can't read the tiny print without the aid of a magnifying lens, but where would you get one of those? Maybe if you lend some people a hand, they'll lend you a lens. So yeah, if we help people out, we might be able to read that book, eventually. It's not required, I would say, but it is very helpful. And this will be a 100% run, as much as you can 100% this game. It's not a particularly long game, it may be only about 10 hours long. Beware of sea urchins, don't touch them with your bare hands. But it is so full of charm. And this is one of the puzzles that I did not put two and two together as a child. I did not think to touch these guys with my shield. Oh, thank you, sir. Instead, there was a glitch that you could abuse way back when this was on the Game Boy to basically go between screens. If you were near a screen transition and you stood on the edge of the, edge of the screen and you moved the screen while pressing start and select, Link would start in the position he is on the, pre on the previous screen on the new screen. And by doing that, you could basically glitch through every obstacle in your way. You didn't need to get the power bracelets or anything like that. But you can also, like, glitch yourself into something like this stone wall and not be able to move and have to reset. Regardless, check this out. Ooh, ooh. 
Hoot hoot. So, you are the lad who owns the sword. Now I understand why the monsters are starting to act so violently. A courageous lad has come to wake the windfish. It is said that you cannot leave the island unless you wake the windfish. You should now go north to the mysterious forest. I will wait for you there. Oop. You found your sword. It must be yours because it has your name engraved on it. You can swing it with B to attack any enemies in your path. You got your sword. It's got your name. Now go and kill all the things. <laughs> yeah, so I would always glitch my way in to get this sword. And uh, that kind of became my go-to to get all the puzzles done. I mean, that's basically how I got out of Mabe Village was I never could beat the first dungeon, so I never could get the items that you needed to leave the village, so I would just glitch my way through the rock and I would go and see how long I could really survive on three hearts and a basic sword and shield out in the wild. Although, you know, I would, like I said, I would go around and farm all the rupees needed for the bow and arrow. I had nothing but time on my hands, and if you get a bow and arrow early enough in the game, you become completely broken. Now, there is going to be a little bit of slowdown on some of these transitions because, as I said, it is entirely a, a uniform, contiguous map. We cut the bushes and go into the well. We get our first piece of heart. You got a piece of heart. Press the plus button to open the subscreen and see. Now, not only that, but now we can actually go and earn money. We could not pick up pots and we could not cut the grass, but now we can. And this is going to be how you really earn a lot of your money early on in the game. And what I want to do is I want to earn enough money to try the trendy game and see the differences. Four rupees. And... You found a secret seashell, but what do you do with it? There are at least 25 of those scattered around the island. I think there's about 30 total. You only need 25, and we'll do our best to fulfill that little side quest as well. But I need a few more rupees. I love that this is a continuous map. You can totally see the enemies on the other side. We can't fight them. But that just makes it feel like such a living world. I mean, to me, that's worth some slight frame rate hiccups here and there. Although it probably won't be as bad on TV mode as it would be in handheld mode. Alright, we have 11 of these. And now that we have the sword, we can actually get in here and see what this is about. This is the Trinity game. This has changed a little bit from the last time I did this. Now, in the Game Boy version, basically the conveyor belt goes all around the center and you can only get the Yoshi doll first and then the piece of heart after that and then it goes to that rupee over there, which I think is a purple rupee for 50. And I had the timing down pretty well for that. This is going to be entirely different. Let's give it a shot. Trendy game! One play, ten rupees. Let's play. The buttons move the crane. The rest is just timing. Go over to the buttons to play. Good luck. Alright, so... I'm gonna go... Up a little bit. Okay, can we just do this? Ah, alright. X to move forward. A to move right. And you move quickly. And we've probably screwed this up. I did not expect it to move that fast. Yeah, we got nothing for that one. But we'll go and get some rupees real quick. If we can get that purple rupee... Challenge again? No, we don't have the rupees for it. Just give me a holler whenever the mood strikes you to play. If we can get that purple rupee, then we can go for the Yoshi doll. 
and the peace of heart. So yeah, I got to be a real expert at that game with the old timing because I figured out that if you started in the upper left corner and your item passed the lower right corner, as soon as it passed the lower right corner, you press the button and uh, the claw would snag it for you 100% of the time. Now in this case, there's no button to lower the claw. That's another change that I noticed. Also, I probably should have gotten that rupee. Alright, let's give this another shot. Yeah. Alright, one play, ten rupees, let's play. The buttons move the crane, the rest is just timing! I'm gonna feather this a little bit more. And too much. Yeah, this might take a little bit of practice for me, actually. So we're not gonna keep doing this at the moment. That is actually very sensitive. This is not nearly as easy as it was in the Game Boy version, which I'm actually... Sorry kid, you don't have the rupees. Come back when you have the cash, which I'm actually okay with. I think there should be some things that are still fairly challenging. We'll get some more rupees on our way north. We need to go to the mysterious woods. Basically, to make any progress in the game because now that we have the sword, we can cut these bushes. We still can't lift this rock. Wow, this looks pretty heavy. You won't be able to lift it with just your bare hands. Now that message did get kind of spammed a little bit because originally anytime you ran into an item without your power bracelets, spoilers, you need the power, bra power bracelets, Without those equipped, you would see that message every time. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Taryn went to the forest to look for toadstools, but I'd rather sing. Listen to this. It's called the Ballad of the Windfish. I love that song. All right, you're just gonna you're gonna sing for me again. All right, enjoy your song. You would think that a song named after the windfish is going to be important. You'd be right, but we can't do anything with that now. Mysterious forest, moblins ahead. They're not friendly. Brave lad on your quest to wake the dreamer. Welcome to the mysterious forest. Much of mystery you will find on this uncharted Kohalunt island. I'm afraid you may find it a trifle difficult to leave the island while the windfish naps. By the by, have you ever visited the tail cave which is south of the village? Go there with the key you find in this forest. The windfish is watching. Oop. Those of you who played Ocarina of Time and may or may not have fond memories of Kepora Gebora, this is the first time Link has an owl guide. So that is yet another reference to this game. Moblins are actually fairly good at dodging and counterattacking. This is a game where I hate to say that parrying is important, but you can parry enemy attacks. We'll see that later on when it's a little bit more important. Right now, these are just spear moblins. What we're worried about are sword and shield moblins. That's where parrying really comes into play. And also shield blocking. Ah, here's one now. If you block their attack, 
you knock them off balance and you can make an attack of your own. But you can also parry their blades if you hit them at the right moment. <laughs> Hello, my little fuzzy friend. As a raccoon, my nose is very sensitive to stuff like dust and powder. Oh, good for you. <laughs> oh, you're going to be lost thanks to me. <laughs> and he takes the woods and mixes it all around. In fact, this is almost completely random. I don't remember starting here the last time. When I was playing this at PAX, I was pretty sure I did not. Maybe I did. You've still got plenty of pep. Come see me when you feel like you can't go on. All right, I'll do that. Great fairies heal 100% of your health. So it's good to know that one's nearby. Choose. Red ones split into two, as you can see. And then the little ones will stick to you and slow you down. Green choose will just only take one hit and they immediately die. All right, we have 10 rupees again, so we can go for the trendy game, but what we want to do is we want to find our way through this forest and we're looking for a particular item. And you kind of blended in. I did not expect to see you. I'm hoping to do this fairly quick, but I do have to remember the way through here. Ha <laughs> ha, you thought you could get me in the back. All right, you're still there. Are you going to mix me up again? Yeah, you are. All right, you going to work me back to the same place? You do. So I'm looking for a particular cave more than anything right now. What I want is a mushroom. Believe it or not, a mushroom solves this puzzle for us. So if we keep going back to that screen, we're going to be warped over here. But I think I see the cave I want. Actually, I'm not going to mess with you. This cave right here. I walked right past it. Do not linger on cracked floors. You will fall into the abyss. Also, keys. Keys are bad for you. You can see them crack under Link's weight. It does not take very much. But we should be able to slide this off. Open our first treasure chest. We got 50 rupees. Very nice. So now we have plenty of trendy game money. These are green shoes. And this is a piece of power. You got a piece of power. You can feel the energy flowing through you. Very, very familiar song right here. One of the complaints of the original, kind of, is that you would run into pieces of power and their counterpart, another power-up, so often that you would hear this song more than the soundtrack itself. But when you have a piece of power, your attack strength is doubled. And here's the mushroom we were looking for. You pick the toadstool. As you hold it over your head, a mellow aroma flows into your nostrils. All right, now that we have that, we want to head straight back through the cave and we're going to go out the back door. Now, here's the thing. At PAX, the guy who was uh, running the demo said that a lot of people actually got stuck on that puzzle for quite a bit of time. People who had not played the original. And even though I played the original, I actually had to remember the solution. In fact, notice that you had to see me, like, take a moment and really think about my moves there. And yes, there is a piece of heart there. I don't think we can do anything about it for the time being. Until... There's an example of parrying an attack. Until we get the power bracelets. Because those skulls are in the way. And we need the power bracelets to lift them so that we can slide the rocks a new direction. Instead, I'm going to ignore it for now and just remember that it's there. This is not going to be the first time we go through the woods. And there is another piece of heart right there. Do not touch this guy. He is electrified. You will get a nasty shock. 
and you can see we're kept indoors with another rock and some pits. So no, we cannot escape the village this way. But we have moved through the mysterious forest to Kohala Prairie. And this is a very important location. Ah, it has the sleepy toadstool, it does. We'll make it, we'll mix it up something in a jiffy, we will. It's all ready, it is. Take care, as there's not much there. Why not try a bit in my hut? You got some magic powder. Open the subscreen with plus and set it to either X or Y. So we now have our first real item. Let's put it on X. Throw magic powder on something like this. Good job. Use it on your enemies and see what happens. If you run out, go to the forest, pick some toadstools, and I will make you more. Come back without a toadstool and you may have to pay a price for my leftovers. So you can get a toadstool and get it for free, or you can pay for some for 50 rupees. So the game gives you 50 rupees early on in case you just want to buy it. But, you know, you get the mushroom for free, or you, you find the mushroom, you get it for free, and if you throw it on this enemy, it changes them and makes them really weird. I'm a changed blob, and that's not all I have to say. All right. Now that I have lips, I fantasize about playing one of this island's songs on a flute. There are three hot local hits. All three of those blobby bops are magic. Literally. If no other two will do the job, pull out one of those songs you got stuck in your head. All right. He's going to cycle through those messages. Uh, in the original, and in fact, I think in the German version, he actually talks about condoms and birth control. I'm going to have to double check on that, but I believe that one of his messages is definitely not really what you expect from a family-friendly game like Zelda. Ooh. You got a guardian acorn. It will reduce the damage you take by half. So now we go blue. We go Super Saiyan God Mode Link Blue. And uh, we take half damage, which means we take a quarter heart instead of half a heart. Now that we have the powder, remember that raccoon said that he was very sensitive to things like dust and powder. What if we, you know, throw this on him? But first, I'm going to throw it on an enemy over here. Just to show you that it sets most enemies on fire. Alright, sir. So you want powder, huh? Have some. Amnesia does to the face! Whoa. Taryn. Last thing I can remember was biting into a big juicy toadstool. Then I had the darndest dream. I was a raccoon. Yeah, sounds strange, but it sure was fun. You just made my life a little bit harder. I hope you're happy with yourself. Anyways, get on home, boy. So now that he has been changed back, we can access this screen, which is protected by pits on both sides. And we can actually leave and go to the next part of the swamp if we want. But we're not going to do that. That's for a later time. Let's grab what's in the treasure chest. You got the tail key. Now you can open the tail cave gate. Hoop. Bake the key and go to the tail cave. Retrieve the instrument that is hidden there. Go now. The windfish is waiting. Hoop. Well, we will certainly do that next time. This is about as far as I really wanted to start the game. Just give you guys an introduction to Koholent Island, all the characters we'll be dealing with, and with the key in hand, 
next time we'll be prepared to take on the tail cave see you then thanks for coming out and joining me today as always i appreciate it and i hope you guys really enjoy this let's play if you do make sure you keep those thumbs up going and if you have any comments make sure you leave me one thanks for watching and i'll see you tomorrow you'll have a great day later <laughs>